Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. In front of you I hold the casing for the Index 21 water cooled python and beer line chiller python to an extent anyway. Um, so this bad boy is what I purchased reconditioned from EWL so it's not off the back of a lorry as many of these are in the industry. So uh, this bad boy, while it's probably still under warranty, the, the mechanical thermostat failed on it, the, uh, the old analog style. So I've gone ahead and replaced it with an STC 1000, not a problem. It's just switching the compressor on and off as required. It's set to uh, one and a half degrees and that's formed a solid ice bank in the unit. So I'm happy with that. But we will be housing the STC either inside the unit where I'll have to take the cover off every time I want to set the temperature. So in order to avoid that, I'm going to cut out a little hole just here in the corner and we're going to pop the STC in there so it can live there happily. Uh, for those of you who are interested, there's a schematic of how exactly this particular unit works. I think that was long enough for you to pause the video. So what I'm going to do is just go back next door now, mark out exactly where I want this so I don't foul any other parts of the system inside with the back of the STC and then we'll come back and we'll cut out a little slot for it to live there. I think it's just there, there's plenty of room actually but I'll go and double check and then we'll put the cover back on. Well that was a real pain in the arse to get completed so the cover that I've cut for the STC to fit into, um, I can't get it back on completely. You have to lift the top up to put the cover underneath and then the top comes down over the front of it. And because the ice bank is a solid block of ice, it's frozen, I can't lift the cover out. So I don't know whether it's been too cold or, uh, or what. I mean, it is an ice bank, right? So it should be frozen as far as I'm aware. But I'll just show you exactly what I mean. There we are. So we've got a nice little STC in there. It's a neat job. It's just this top section, look. I can't lift the ice bank out because well, it's completely frozen in there. Well, it's starting to thaw out a little bit now because it's been turned off a while. So I'm hoping that give it uh, an hour or so that will have thawed out sufficiently enough for me to lift that, pop that in and just put these few screws back in. But I had to do the same thing with this controller. The analog stat failed on that as well. Uh, but this one was bought from eBay. Apparently it came out of an old police station. So uh, that is just one of the old STC 1000 knockoffs. That's got an authentic STC 1000 in it. You can actually see the difference. That one just says work and set on the front. Whereas this one, well it's got the full shebang and it says STC on the bottom. So I've also put a piece of plastic on top of the STC as a drip shield. So if any drips drop down on top, it's not gonna go on the electrics. It'll just run off like a little bus shelter styly thing. So she's operational. That's another job off the list. Just have to come in and put those two screws in. Sort of uh, sometime later on today. Right, I'm going to nip up to the uh, guys who sell fascia and soffix. I've had a bit of a brainwave. So on this section here, instead of tiling it, I could just get some cover board, 150 cover board. I think that'll be big enough to go all the way around. Oh, a bit short there. Maybe over here it's going to be short as well. 170, 180 cover board then. So we've got some 180 cover board and then we can use some, uh, what's it called? Hollow clad up the wall to clad this section and then it'll all be nice and hygienic like. So I'm going to nip up and just grab a length of that after I've measured it. I think a length will do. They come in fives or sixes. Really pleased. Keep going back to it. This is looking better and better. So we've got a few more bits of plastic to cut 
and then we'll have all of this section looking well clinical that's my intention now I'm just going to grab the tripod here I've got a little bit of a distraction actually and it's more to help out another brewer so as you guys may or may not know new to homebrew Tom is building basically a new brewery for himself but he's building a control panel and uh, the PID controllers that I use over there I've got an old Rex C100 which does not have a manual mode just do the HLT not a problem and then I've got um, a very expensive one that I got off a piece of kit from the popcorn factory that they were scrapping it's a West series 6100 6, I think uh, and I'm unfamiliar with the Inkbird PIDs so I thought I'd buy one to see how it works and exactly how uh, whether they have a manual mode and what the output is on this one so this is the ITC 100 RL so the R I believe stands for relay that's a relay output it doesn't put any voltage out so we have on the side there an explanation that it does in fact have a normally open and normally closed pole on the relay power going in it wants 12 to 24 volts AC or DC to, to power it and uh, let's have a look then there's an alarm output so we need to power this effectively and then see if there is a manual mode on it there we go appearing like magic my little screwdriver set oh yes so we'll pop that in there so now we have 12 volts AC DC sorry so power 9 and 10 it doesn't give you a positive or a negative so let's assume this is where we ruin it let's assume there's a some type of rectifier inside to prevent us wiring it up in the wrong direction we wouldn't want to do that sometimes you can blow things up but let's just uh, double check by looking on here power supply DC 12 to 24 volts just says power in yeah well that should do us then so boom there we go she lives she lives it's asking me if I want oral frig yes I do so I have to figure out how to set this first let's pause the video and come back right I've dug out an old PT 100 so that's probably why that's flashing so let's just put the uh, temperature controller over three and four it's asking for three and four there so let's pop that in just see if that creates a different reading on the front because it's obviously it's looking for something there we go reading 15 degrees and as I hold it the temperature is dropping which means I've wired it up backwards just in case you do that yourself and you're not sure so we'll just swap the red with the blue and pop them back in there we go power it back up again temperature is now going to climb perfect right finally figured it out Tom you'll be pleased to know watch this indicator it does have a manual mode so what you have to do is go into the menu by pressing and holding the set button and then you need to scroll through wrong button <laughs> press the set to scroll through 
until we get all the way to the one that says run and the factory setting on there we go oh, I've gone past it now so the factory setting anyway on that is two which means no manual well we want to have manual so once you've set it up you can come into manual like this here and you can start to change the setting so that little sign there is an M that means manual if I put it all the way up to 100 then that should stay on all the time it's not Oh, I've pressed some, uh, I don't know what I've pressed. Was that it? Ah, oh, yeah, I must have done it. So it stayed on. It's on 100%. Then if you press the A, T or run button, it said for less than a second. Well, I clearly don't know what I'm talking about here, buddy. The gist of it is, <laughs> I need to play with this, but yes, it does have a manual mode, buddy. So, get an ink bird. Save your searching around everywhere else. I hope that was of some help. Certainly wasted half an hour of my time. <laughs> so I might change this ink bird out then uh, and put that into my control panel, get rid of the C100s because they are shizzle. And then once I've got one on the system, I can start to learn how to use it. Cast your weary eyes over that semi-complete development. So we've got all of the hollow cladding, I know they forgot what it was called, and I've taken some concrete blocks, laid them out to get a little bit of gravity to help uh, keep them against the wall because I've stuck them to the wall just using low mod silicon easy, cheap, and it will probably last forever that. Normally once it grabs, it grabs. So all we have to do when we come back next week, once this is stuck, is put some trim on the top. I've got some starter trim, but I could probably get away with a little bit of quadrant if I had any, I don't, so we'll see what the starter trim looks like. If it looks chintzy, I'll put quadrant on there. But looking all the way around, I think, that's an absolutely super transformation. I've got a bit of chicken in my throat. <clears> throat> uh, so I better go and get myself a drink. It is Friday after all. So I'm gonna wrap up the vlog right now. We'll see you next week.